I think that what um, what we agree with is the absolutely magnificent achievements of capitalism. And I think that the what uh, we agree as well with is that there is something that has absolutely nothing to do with capitalism, uh, which is negative, which is cronyism. But cronyism is not a direct consequence of capitalism. It's a co direct consequence of statism. The massive money printing and the huge levels of uh, uh, in monetary injections and uh, government uh, uh, increases in, in deficits, etc. Those have very little to do with free markets and uh, capitalism, as, as we both agree, I think that that is correct. However, I think that there's a starting point that I think is important to understand, is that the natural state of the human being is not wealth, is poverty, is abject poverty. And that the and that it's not a, wealth is not something that is parked somewhere and that we just redistribute. You create wealth out of uh, what is unfortunately the the natural state of humanity from the beginning, which is poverty. No. So what so capitalism doesn't create poverty. Capitalism makes people escape from poverty. What I do agree with Professor Varoufakis significantly is that what we're living right now has very little to do with our concept of a free market economy in which the benefits of markets and the benefits of merit uh, outweigh the negatives that might be created in the process of exchange of goods and services. But, the, but that's not due to the capitalist system. It is due to what we have been living. And I would uh, go back a little bit behind that 2008 figure, uh, 2008 year. Uh, it's more around the mid 90s when statism takes hold to a maximum effect. Uh, the dot-com bubble that he explains with his uh, good friend Costas in, in the book, in the, the, in the absolutely fantastic book, uh, it, that is the beginning, in my opinion, of what has been a constant uh, cronyist approach from governments with central banks to create an elite that eliminates the possibility of many of the benefits of capitalism to actually thrive. Why is it that capitalism cannot manage with negative external externalities like climate change, resource consumption, or social exclusion? I'm going to be very, very quick. Uh, first, <clears throat> and I want to clarify first, I didn't say that banks uh, create money, uh, one saving, one, one let. No, it's that every unit that is lent goes, is going to an investment or something that is, that is likely to be repaid. Because if, if banks created money out of thin air, none of them would, would crash or, or go bankrupt, obviously. Uh, I, the ones that create money from thin air are cent central banks. And you even in systems in which you don't have private banks or in which private banks are controlled by the state, the, it is the state through the central bank that increases liquidity and increase and reduces interest rates artificially in order to, to use banks as a, as a tool. The, the competition between uh, technology firms. We are looking at technology today from a perspective that is called presentism. We look at them today and we say, wow, this huge market power, We're, and they, they control everything. No, we forget, where's Yahoo? Where, where are, where's WorldCom? Where are all of the companies that were supposed to be uh, uh, inexpugnable and impossible to take away? There are no barriers of entry. The moment that Amazon, Google, Facebook, you name it, and, and some of them are already going through the process of losing their market share, etc. cetera. The, the moment that they, that they lose their uh, competitive advantage, they, it's not just that they will uh, fade away like a large corporate, like General Motors or Exxon did. No, 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 no. It's that they will be wiped out. But anyway, uh, and they will, by the way, and we will talk about this in a few years. Uh, I always say to my, to my students and everyone, think about Yahoo, think about WorldCom, WorldCom and all of these companies. The other point, uh, 
capitalism not only can manage externalities like climate, social exclusion, etc. It's the only way to manage them because you can have two models, a profit-based economy or a lost-based economy. There's no other thing. There's no such thing as a zero-based economy. Huh? So the problem that you have is that if you try to address climate, social exclusion, or uh, other externalities from the perspective of a loss-based economy, the impact that you get on reducing those factors is inexistent, and the impact that you get on jobs and on growth is monumental. The only way in which you address climate, social exclusion, etc., is through technology and competition, which is exactly where Yanis and I completely agree. And that's where I finish. <laughs> the fact that dinosaurs existed and disappeared does not mean that they had massive power when they existed. You know, there's absolutely nothing bad about market leaders. There is absolutely nothing bad about market leaders as long as they are not Mm, uh, monopolies implemented by the state that give bad service, bad goods and service, or add bad prices for political mm -hmm. control. The problem, I think, that we, that where our views align is incentives. Mm -hmm. And I think that the point that we get to is that the more no matter where cat and mouse situation or, or chicken and egg situation of, of, of who started first, the more that every single imbalance in the economy is tried to be solved via huge injections of liquidity and mass uh, uh, reduction in rates, money creation is never neutral. Money creation disproportionately benefits the first recipients of money and disproportionately impacts negatively the savers and the real wages. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, leave your comments below and keep defending freedom. Thank you very much.